I'm Yasunori Hori from the Astronomical Biology Center and the National Astronomical Observatory of Japan. So, at first of all, I appreciate this great opportunity to come to a nice place and give you a talk here. Today, I will talk about the Trappist-1 system. A collaborator with this work is Masahiro Ogihara's. The first, or let's see the, what the Trappist-1 system is like. So, Trappist-1 star is uh, about the 12 uh, particle away from us. The, it is classified as an M-type star, but the mass of the star is uh, about 0.08 times solar mass, which is close to the star at the brown dwarf mass boundary. The age of the star is not well determined, but it may be older than our sun. The recently a transit photometry on the ground has reported oh, this planet has seven outside planets, so as shown in this, in this figure the piece. So the reason why so this crew and the small star is so popular among us now is that three of the seven stars orbiting Tropic One are potentially habitable. So we all dream that there would be the ocean, the glacier, lakes, and the, on the mountains or their surface, just like this area. So but the reality is not simple and it may not be so optimistic, like, just like the future career of the possible the graduate students. So, 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 oh, in fact, the habitability of the planet depends on the mass, the bulk composition, and the atmosphere of the planet, and also the mantle convection, the place of tectonics, and the many factors. So one of them, the mass of the transit planet is estimated from the transit time variation, so-called TPBs. In the multiple uh, planet system, like our sun, each planet interacts always gravitationally. So, transit time variation can be caused such a gravitational perturbation from the other planets. So that's why the TTB events can be used to infer the zero masses if we know the separation between the planets. So here is a so tropics and the mass, a mass is the radii. So mass is the radii, the tropics runs so the, is a here, oh. here, here. So, and also the mass radius relationships of the eight types of the planets derived from the interior moorings that are joined by the solid curves. For example, the, here is a, a planet like the island ball, and also the, a lucky planet like the Earth and the Mars, and the or water world, and also the lucky planet with a hydrogen atmosphere. So as we can see, so there are three possible by composition of the tropics on the planets. The first, a rocky planet, or like the Earth and the Mars, and the second, the mixture, and the rocky material, and the ices. So as suggested by the statistical approach of the interior modeling, like the interbound that works. The third, a planet has the thin atmosphere. A thin mean, the mass fraction of the atmosphere planets is lower than 0.1 weight percent of the total mass of the planet. So because here is uh, the mass radius relationship of the planet with the uh, hydrogen atmosphere or the 0.1 weight percent of the total mass of the planet. Well, what on Earth are the tropics one planet made of? So we are sure our tropics one B and C have atmosphere because transmission spectra in the atmosphere of so the planet have been observed by HST, so wide field camera. So like this figure. We can see that both planets have a flat absorption feature, like this, at a near infrared wavelengths. However, what kind of the atmosphere they have is not clear, because there are still two possible solutions. One is that hydrogen dominated the atmosphere with a thick cloud and haze located larger than so 10 meter the other, a volatile, rich atmosphere, <coughs> or like the water vapor. So that's why, so in this talk, we have investigated whether tropics and planets can have the hydrogen rich atmosphere in the context of the plant formation. So we have the one important key to know the, how tropics and planets form. So all the inner planets form the resonant chains on the almost same orbital planes. So specifically, so the, 
the ratio of the orbital period of the neighboring the peers are integer ratios, like uh, 8 to 5, 5 to 3, like this way. And in addition, the three outer planets are mostly likely in Laplace resonance. Laplace resonance is a 1 to 4 ratios. So the other Laplace resonance system that we know is a Galilean satellite in our solar system. Well, how can we explain such a beautiful orbital configuration? It's easy. If your planet moves back and forth, such a, a mean motion resonance, like a resonance chain, can form easily. So in order to verify that this concept, we carried out an body simulation on the planet formation on the cool stars. Oh, this is a demonstration. Oh, initially, the isolated planet embryos were distributed in the disk, and then we incorporated the up-to-dated picture of the disk models into the, our test simulation. So for example, the disk evolution with the disk wind, a uh, non isos hormone type of migration, so the, due to the disk's planet interaction, and so on. OK, well, let's see the result. So the left panel shows uh, the orbital evolution of each planet. The color is eccentricities. Or we can see orbital crossing that happens many times in this simulation. So orbital crossing means that usually the collision between the two planets and planets or two planetary embryos. So the migrating planets experience the collisions to grow larger. And then it's finally it's kept trapped in resonance chain like uh, this way. Okay, so the, more, the light, light, uh, light panel shows the uh, ratio of the orbital period of the neighboring planet as a function of the number of the planets. So I just showed the only the four result from the, our test simulation. The green one is the Trappist Swan system. Oh, as you can see, so we did not reproduce the perfect Trappist Swan system. So, but we confirm Trappist Swan, like the multiple system, multiple planet system in the resonance chain can form or, or during the planetary migration. Okay, so here is the next topics. So next, we see the how massive atmosphere, how massive the hydrogen rich atmosphere they can obtain uh, during the planetary migration in the previous simulations. Uh, planet C, planet C, start migrating inward and are creating the, this gas on the way. So this gas uh, mainly consists of the uh, hydrogen the helium, like the solar composition. So we consider that our planet C has or have the one or two Earth methods, which cover the mass range of the tropical swamp plants. And also, we adapt the slow migration. Why the slow migration? So in the previous simulation, we used the slow migration model. The slow migration model can ex or reproduce, or can make it a, or resonance chain easily. So that's why we adapt the slow migration model. OK, here is the result. So this figure showed a, a mass fraction of the atmosphere of the planet as a function of the location. For example, here, or pretty see the red guys. Or red guys start migrate, migrating from here. On the way, oh here, on the way, the accretive this gas. And so finally, it's trapped in the resonant chain. That's why it stopped the migrating. So, but after the planets, a red guy stopped migrating, the mass fraction of the atmosphere of the planet, of this guy, it decreases the time. Because, so this gas dissipated with the time. Finally, the final mass fraction of the atmosphere of this guy is the uh, field circle. Amazingly, this value is uh, almost the same as a non-migration case. In another world, oh, if a planet never moves and accreted this gas, this gas is a hydrogen-rich gas in situ. 
the final mass fraction of the atmosphere of the planet is an open circle. So this means the final atmospheric mass fraction of the planet is determined by the final location. And also, here is the snow line. So many, oh, today, so someone talked about the snow line. So beyond the snow line, so the, the temperature of this gas is low. So this means, so this gas has a low thermal energy. It's easy for the planetary embryo, the planet, to capture this gas, such a gas gravitationally. But even the, the planet, which starts migrating beyond the snow line, cannot obtain the massive hydrogen rich atmosphere. So based on our result, so what can I say about the atmosphere of the tropical planets? So the current location of the tropical planets, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, like this here. So you can see, as you can see, the tropical planets can have at most 0.1 weight percent or 1 weight percent of the total mass of the zero masses, zero planets. So I can say the migrate, migration is not so big advantage to make the massive atmosphere onto the planet. So in this talk, so I showed that the tropical planets can accrete at most 0.1 or 1 weight percent the hydrogen rich atmosphere of the total mass during the migration. But we have the next question. So can they retain this such an atmosphere or so until now? So the tropical one star is not so young, maybe, so but still active. Active means that the tropical one star shows a strong X-ray emission. It's comparable to the current sun and also the frequent flare events. So this means that even the 0.1 weight percent, the 1 weight percent the hydrogen rich atmosphere, the, the tropical planet have almost all, all the hydrogen rich atmosphere can be lost. Or due to the thermal, thermal means the X-ray, the UV radiation, and also the non-thermal escape processes. So, as implication from the, this work, if tropical planets still retain the hydrogen in the atmosphere, it is uh, it's likely to originate from the other processes, such as the water loss. This means that the, the hydrogen in the atmosphere onto the tropical planets are not likely to originate from the pre or this gas. <laughs> Okay, so complete my talk, so please give me a second. So I have an advertisement about the international workshop on the super the atmosphere in Tokyo, Japan. So online the registration, the abstract submission is now open. So we are happy if you consider, if, if you could cons uh, consider participation in this workshop. Thank you. Well, <laughs> yeah, thank you.